Thank you, Paul. Always helps. Ready when you are, sir. Unmute myself when I want to talk. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, Graham, hi. Can you hear me okay? Hi, yes, I can, yeah. Hi. You well? Very well. Yourself? Yep, good, thank you. Um, tell us how the, the squad's looking. I realise you've got a, a few days yet, but um, is there any good news on Dan Byrne or Adam Webster? Um, yeah, both trained this morning, um, so that's that's good for us. We just to see how they how they respond to that. Um, so yeah, re- really, really positive. Um, Aaron Connolly may be trained towards the back end of the week. We'll see. But um, no, it's nice to have Darren, uh, Dan and um, and Adam back. They will be fit, will they? Well, You're again, pretty, pretty sure. Pretty sure. We'll see how they respond. There's a few more training sessions, but um, and Adam's been out a while, so we just need to see how he reacts to everything. But. Um, yeah, like I said, they joined the group and and trained today, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll take it as it as it goes as the week goes. And how far away do you think um, Aaron Connolly is? Yeah, again, um, he, he hasn't trained this week yet, so um, but it's just a, a soreness on his foot, so we just a, we need to um, wait for that pain to go. Really, um, there's a chance for the back end of the you know the back end of the week, short weekend, but. Um, We'll see. Okay, everybody else. Okay, no, no new problems. Let's put it that way. Uh, no, off the top of my head, no, 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 no new problems. Okay. Um, look, Florent Andoni hasn't played this season. Did, I mean, do you, do you see a role for him between now and 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 the end, or or not? Well, yeah. I mean, he's he's um, he's recovering from a. He's been out for a long time, so he's had a major. Um, problem with his knee so he's he's worked really hard to be back he's been back in the groups training with the group he's due to get some time on the pitch within the 23s over the next day or so so that's positive for us and then from there we need to just take the right steps to to allow him to get up to match you know match fitness i mean he's been out for neon nine months now so it's not so easy just to go straight into a premier league game but um uh, the focus now is to is to get him up to speed, get him um, some match time, to keep building himself up, and who knows? You go into this match against Everton, having won what, two of the last three, beat Southampton, beat Newcastle, but lost to Manchester United. Did, did that defeat in any way undo any of the positives from the previous two matches? No, I wouldn't say it didn't undo anything. I think um, it, it's it's highlighted it, uh, where we're at, which is we have to be really, really good to take points in the Premier League. And um, whilst we were we, we were okay, we weren't as as good as I think we can be against Manchester United. And um, and that's what we have to focus on. We have to um, you know learn from that and 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 make sure that we 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 try and get the maximum level we can out of ourselves for the next eight matches of course there's always an opponent on the pitch which makes it difficult for you to do exactly what you want to do and Manchester United is a is a high quality opponent I would say but um never, nevertheless we can still um focus on ourselves and the things that we can do better we need to we need to do and then we need to take that into the the remaining matches you mentioned eight to play, 32 points at the moment. Two more wins, would that do it for you, do you think? Uh, who knows? Uh, we, we, we just focus on trying to get the next win, which is um, the next opportunity is, is Everton. Focus on the next game. Try and get as many points as we can, but the best way to do that is just to focus on the next match. And, um, you know, we face a team that's fighting again at the, the top end of the table, so it's another tough one for us, but... Um, we're looking forward to it. We need to. We need to respond. What do you make of Everton just at the moment? Um, they've taken just one point from the last three in the Premier League. Ah, but, but before then, they had I think three straight wins. So it's it depends which sta- which statistic you want to focus on. I think um, you know they've invested heavily over a period of time. They've got a top top manager. They're, as I've said, fighting at the top end of the table. They've got some really, really talented, you know, individual players. Um, they're, they're they're flexible in how they play. So we expect a difficult match. That's as simple as that. 
Well, I'll ask you about uh, Jakob Muda. He's He started the last two matches for you. How do you feel he has developed since joining you, what, back in January time? Well, I think it's just a case that he... How's he progressing? Yeah, I think it's just that he's settled in. He, he, he came to us on the back of his... Uh, little break that he had because he was finishing finished his d domestic season and a winter break played a lot of football but then came to us um, adapting to a new club adapting to a new um, team a new league a new country so he's done all that really well um, the team went through a period where we were playing well and getting some you know decent results at the start of the year so he's had to be a bit patient but he's he's done it in a good way um, getting to know the players more, building relationships with them. And I think he's, yeah, he's contributed well. And finally from me, uh, your former club Swansea have today announced that the club, the players and the staff from five o'clock today are to come off social media for one week, for a whole week. Is, is that something that, that you support? Well, I know the guys at Swansea, especially the... Uh, the guys in the media department but you know a lot of the people there it's a good club with good people so whatever they decide is right for them is is absolutely fine by me and I, I support their their decision because it's based on what they know about their club and what's the right thing to do for their for their players so um, you know congratulations to them for for making a for making a stand is it something that perhaps other clubs could consider? Is it something that Brighton could consider? Well, I've, uh, I'm, I'm sure it is. I, I, as I said, I think it's it's for every club to decide what, what the right thing is for them. And um, I don't think we can sit here and judge what the other people do, positively or negatively. It's it's up to them to make the the decision that they feel is right for them in, in, the, in the current situation. But um, I certainly wouldn't be against it. We'll, we'll, we'll keep assessing the situation, see what we can do to to affect it because at the moment it isn't um, it doesn't feel like we've we've got the right the right environment. Graham, thank you, listen, wish you well. Thank you. Good luck good luck Monday. Cheers. Hi Graham, Miriam here from ELP. Hi. Uh, how much of a difference will it make when Adam and Dan are back, whether it's Monday or after Monday, to the to the last few games? Well, I think it's more um, for the last two or three matches we've been we've been working with really three fit defenders. So there's a you're a little bit worried if you pick up an injury or something, you're a bit light and you're a bit vulnerable, feeling a bit vulnerable. So credit to the players that they've managed managed to go through that period and um, we, we found a solution as a team to be able to do without that that number but I think it's like anything if you've got some good players that have been injured and they're coming back it's beneficial to the team because it adds um, competition it adds uh, options it adds different ways to approach matches and um, I think that's what we need over the next eight games. And you said you, you know you need to focus on the games as they come individually, but when you've got you know City, Chelsea, Arsenal in those last eight games, how difficult is it not to see the next kind of six weeks as one block of hard work? Yeah, I mean we we had I think we've got experience from last year. We we came back from the lockdown and we faced I think it was Arsenal, Manchester City, Liverpool, Manchester United. And Leicester, I think it was, in a, a game block of nine matches. Um, so we, we know that it's, uh, it's it's every game in the Premier League is difficult, um, and you can think about blocks and you think about you know packets of games. But ultimately, the only game that matters is the next match. That's the only one that you, all focus, everything is should be to that game. And we try our best. We try and get a result. And um, if we do or we don't, we have to try to learn and try to develop and try to get better because we're facing the next the next game and that becomes the most important. And that's really how we've always worked and I think how we have to work with the next eight, eight, eight games. And when, when you're thinking about keeping the players motivated um, and I guess how do you keep them more motivated than every other player from every other club who's at risk of relegation? What, what do you do? that puts them above everyone else? 
Well, I, I, I can only speak for what what we do. We have to. I think you have to be consistent with how you how you work. You have to try to um, focus on on the things that you can control, which is the performance level of the players. Understand the 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 the, the nature of the situation in terms of what's at stake and the pressure and all that sort of stuff. But this is elite level football. This is the Premier League. Unfortunately, no one thinks it's going to be easy. So we have to do our best um, and, and, and try to keep pushing to try to improve because I think that's always really, really important. It's the thing that you can control. You can drive yourself really, really crazy just trying to chase a result. We have to focus on the things we can do to get the result. Are the guys able to do anything kind of outside of training still as a team to kind of build morale or not really because of the lockdown? Not really because of the, the world we're living in. Um, but I must say that, you know, we, we, we've managed it quite well in terms of when the players have been here, how we're working every day. There's never been a real, I don't think there's been a problem in terms of motivation or togetherness or positivity. I think we've been really, really fortunate of course it's never perfect you always have your ups and downs along the season but as i've said before it's a really strong group i'm really happy with how the group is how it how it conducts itself great bunch of guys the ones that are not in the team are supporting the team but they want to play they're ready to help if they need to there's there's healthy competition there's good respect so there's lots of things there that we we feel really positive about but until you get the points we know we're just got to keep fighting well, thanks a lot. That's it for me. OK. Hi there, Graham. Um, Danny okay. Welbeck scored against his former club. I think that's four in ten for him. He's on a one-year contract. Would you be keen for him to extend his stay with you? Yeah, I think Danny's been... Um, I think he's been really, really good for us. Um, frustrated to lose him in the, in the middle part of the season. But um, regardless of that, he's been... Um, you know, fantastic. I think around the group, re really good. He has the respect of everybody at the, in, in the in the group and the club. And then, uh, you know, if you look at his goals when he's been on the pitch, it's been really, really. His return has been really positive. So I think he's a player that we're gonna, of course, sit down with at the end of the season and 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 find the right the right solution for everybody. That's how it is. That's that's that's. I think how we've always thought about this, but. Um, no, I've been really happy with Danny. In terms of the game, I know you're a real student of the game and you, you talk often about managers. What impact has Carlo Ancelotti had on, on, on football in recent years at so many different clubs as well? I think it's, uh, I think it's to say massive is an, obviously an understatement. Um, he's worked at a very, very highest level, done everything that he can at, at, in the game has done it in his in his way has followed some you know followed some big coaches followed i think followed pep into bayern munich as i as i remember that type of stuff he's, he's he does it in his i think his own way he's a quiet way of leadership i think and um but just a really really impressive character um huge influence on 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 modern football and will go down as one of the one of the great coaches and he's got a great squad there with him, hasn't he? I know they've got a few injuries at the moment, but some serious depth as well. Yeah, well, as I've said, they, they've invested as, as a club like Everton, a massive club, and, and they've got a, you know ambition, of course, and, and they've invested over a period of time. That doesn't mean to say it's, it's, a, it's a straightforward job for, for Carlo, because he's still got to organise things, but I think he's done it well since he's been there. And... Um, I think you know they'll 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 go stronger and stronger as as long as he's there. You were just talking earlier with Miriam about self motivation. It really appears your squad is a very big self motivated group. Do you have to do much work with them on that sort of side of things, or do you leave that very much to them? Well, I think um, I think you speak to most people in the game, especially at this level, that the motivation has to come from within, from the players. F firstly. Um, that their their job, I think, is to make sure they're they're ready for the game. They want to they want to try and improve. They want to get better as as individuals because it's it, it benefits their careers for that to happen. 
But I think uh, our point is to try to link it with the team, with the club, so that they buy into what we're doing here and, 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 and that, that it's not just about them as individuals. They're, they're, they're buying into the team and the club. And I think if you do that, then you can get a one plus one is three. That's what we're trying to do. Um, it's, 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 of course, challenging in the Premier League because people like to win. And, um, and uh, winning football ma ma matches is a way just to keep that motivation ticking along. And when you're not winning, it, it can test it. But credit to the players. They've been really, really good. Some good people in the, in the dressing room, which helps. Um, and, and I think there's a, a nice mix of, um, of different characters, different people, uh, different parts of the world that are all trying to help each other improve and, and try to create a, a club and a team that we're, we're proud of. Because all players at all levels are under a lot of pressure. I'm sure you'll have seen the very sad news at Yeovil Town recently. Just wondered what your thoughts were really on the, on the importance of mental health for players, particularly when they're in such a spotlight, um, you know, what, whatever the level that they're playing at. Yeah, incredibly sad thoughts. Our thoughts are with Lee Collins' family. Um, and friends and, and Daryl Saal at, at Yeovil and everybody connected with Yeovil Town Football Club is incredibly sad um, and, and I think it's just another highlight of how important it is to uh, especially as men Johnny I don't think we're the best at, 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 at talking about showing vulnerability about expressing when we're when we're in a bit of trouble or we, we, we have feelings that, that, are, that are hard to articulate I think it's important that we that we make sure we're there for each other that that um, that we look out for each other that we ask each other if we're okay just simple things but um, in incredibly sad um, and I think it, it, it sort of links in with the discussion we're having around social media about how it's another sh it's another aspect of life that is adding to the the challenge because there's a lot of negativity out there and, and even that I think is, is, is sometimes hard to process. So yeah, modern life is, is tough and I think, I think as, as men in particular we need to be okay with that, we need to be honest enough to admit that at times and, and talk about it.